Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to create the Game of Thrones fund all by yourself using Photoshop CC or antecedent versions. Now very recently I was creating Game of Thrones thumbnail for my latest walkthrough of Telltale Game of Thrones episodic series and it hit me that I had to utilize the original GOT fund. So I went on YouTube to hand down a guide. I spent a lot of time doing that, however there wasn't any. Not a single soul had created a tutorial on how to create a Game of Thrones fun with dropping shadows, gradient overlay or even blending options. So I made one by myself and in this video I'm going to demonstrate it for you guys. So the first thing that you're going to do is to download the original Game of Thrones fun for getting the original shapes. I will insert the link for downloading the fun in the description bar below. Download it, then show the destination folder and then extract the files using Renoir or any other software that you choose to extract files with. Then you have to install the fund, and since I have already installed it, it asks me whether I want to replace it or not. I will. So the next step is to open Photoshop. I am using the latest version called CC, but it isn't that different from CS6 or CS5. Make a new project and select the resolution that you want to use. I am frequently using 1920-1080 since it is standard procedure for my use of work, but go ahead and choose your own if necessary. Now click on the paint bucket tool and choose the color of your background. I will use the black color background. Now click on the horizontal type tool and enter the text that shall be illustrated at your final work. I will use my name. Now, go and change the fund to the fund that you have just downloaded. And as you can see here, it doesn't look anything at all like the Game of Thrones fund, but it will. This is just the fund which will help us make the final Game of Thrones fund. Now we will have to change the fund size of the letters which comes after the first one. So I will change the size to 25 in both names to create good kerning between the two characters in each word. Now to show this character and paragraph panel you will need to click here and then we will have to vertically scale these low sized letters from the big letters. So I will set the baseline shift to 9, I might change it when I see the results but let's start off by inserting 9 in each selection of characters. Now we have successfully set a baseline shift and vertically and horizontally scale the character from each other. Now this is where it is about to go down. I'm serious, it is about to go down. So you better have to pin back your ears and give heed to what I'm about to say and demonstrate. And again, I'm serious, it is about to go down. When you are in the blending options menu, there is nothing that you will have to change in the general and advanced blending sections, but you are going to tick the bevel and emboss box and it will show you structure and shading options. You will need to set the depth to 90% and then you will need to set the size to 7. You won't have to change the level of softness, so make it stay at 0. You are not going to change the angle or altitude, but you are going to change the highlight mode's color to black. And now, set the mode to normal instead of screen, let the shadow mode stay at multiply and black color it. Now, go and change the opacity of high lightning to 90% and the opacity of shadowing to 70%. And that was actually the very first style, now there's only 3 left and contour will be our next. Click on the graphically illustrated contour and make sure that the preset is on linear. Click on the line and set the input to 75% and then the output to 45%. Now that was one more of the many important steps, so be sure to have that one right as well, or just be sure to have everything set as instructed. Now click on the gradient overlay and set the blending mode to lighten. You will need to let the opacity stay at 100% and let the gradient be the same mixture of colors, but remember to click on reverse, very important. And that was actually all of it for the gradient overlay. Now for the last step where you will have to modify the drop shadows, so click on drop shadow and set the opacity to 80%. You will not have to change the angle, but you will have to change the distance and size. So change the distance to 7, let the spread stay at 0 and set the size to 10. Click OK and now you're actually done. But as you can see here at the results, the letters is way too misplaced. Therefore, we will have to modify the baseline shift, which you will set to 8 instead of 9 in every single word that you have typed in in the photography. And here it is. It is now finished, but before I'll end this tutorial, I would like to duplicate my layer and replace my name with Game of Thrones so you can see that the results is pretty damn near the original logo. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. I hope that this tutorial helped you, and if it did, Please give it a thumbs up, take care.